Welcome to the Inspire and Learn series. We are the Multihull Group, a multi-award winning dealership in Australia, specialising in catamarans. Join us as our expert team teach you all about anchoring, docking, rigging, sail trim, maintenance, and so much more, so you can build confidence in your catamaran handling ability. In this episode, Joe Fox demonstrates the two ways of med mooring, using an anchor and a mooring block. Hello and welcome back to another Inspire and Learn episode with the Multihull Group. My name is Joe Fox and today we're on board a beautiful new Lagoon 46. Backed by popular demand, we're going to be looking at a mooring technique called med mooring today. This is a technique we don't really use much here in Australia, but overseas in, uh, in Europe, most parts in the med. This is a technique you use for, for parking the boat stern two on a, a town quay or a wharf. Now the reason they do this is marinas take up a lot of space. They're very expensive to install. So it's much more efficient to stack boats side by side, stern two along a town quay. If you imagine a Lagoon 46 alongside, it's kind of a 15, 16 meter boat. Now, if you park that stern to the key, you're reducing your key, key uh, space down to about eight meters. So it means the marinas in Europe can get a lot more boats into, uh, into the town. Now we're demonstrating this on a Lagoon 46 today. This maneuver is the same, whether you're doing it on a Lagoon 40, anything up to a Lagoon 55, even the bigger models. So the, the principles are pretty much the same. Today we've got about a 10 knot northerly wind blowing straight on our beam. So this is actually very good for demonstrating because it, uh, it allows me to demonstrate how to keep control of the vessel uh, when we're coming back into the berth with the wind blowing us sideways in a direction we generally don't want to be going. So it's, uh, it's quite a challenge. We're gonna be looking at two med mooring styles today. So the first one that we're going to do involves using the anchor. Now this involves dropping the anchor say 50, 60 meters out in front of the boat, reversing back towards the dock and fixing two stern lines either side of the boat onto the dock. Once we've got the stern lines in place, we then tighten up the anchor, we make sure the boat's set and we can turn off the engines and start enjoying the beautiful Mediterranean town. The second method that we're going to be looking at today is the use of mooring lines for this. Now, this is a different system, very similar concept. So we will not be using the anchor. We'll be reversing into the dock without the anchor going down. We'll get two stern lines on, and then we'll talk through the med mooring style mooring lines, which replace the anchor with a big concrete block, 50 or 60 meters out, and a nice rope to come in to your bow cleats to hold you off the dock. Hope you enjoy this episode, and uh, if we can teach you something today, that's fantastic. This maneuver that we're doing today can be done quite easily with two people, so a helmsman and a crew member. Now I've got Ben Rones on board today helping me out. Ben's part of our service team uh, with Vessel Tech, looking after a lot of the new lagoons that come into Australia. So Ben, thank you for joining us. Pleasure to have you on board. We'll be working together to get this boat from out there in the wind, in here safely alongside the dock. So communication uh, when you're completing this maneuver is quite essential. So I'm going to be positioned at the helm station driving the boat and Ben will be a bit all over the boat. He'll be dropping the anchor at first um, and then once the anchor's down enough he will make his way to the aft section of the boat. Now, ben is going to be calling my distance so he's going to go five, four, three, two and then you guessed it one meters as we come in so that I know where the boat is, how far I am off the dock. Now on this 46 this model has stern cameras optioned as well so I've actually got a, a camera looking out the back of the boat on the chart plotter here so as well as you know listening to Ben and hearing Ben I can see him and see when he's getting the lines on and more importantly the distance to the back of the boat from the dock. If you don't have a camera that's not a problem it's just like I said before it's just that clear communication so Ben talking nice and loud so that he's giving me all that info I need so I know when to stop the boat. So on your approach into the marina or the port um, there are a few things you want to bear in mind so you want to be looking um, generally in the Mediterranean uh, you have marineros in Croatia, they're called other things all over the med but there are dock hands normally wearing a white shirt to, uh, to help you and, and catch your lines uh, if you need a little bit of assistance. Listen to them because they will guide you in to the right spot, they'll, they'll take you to a spot that's easy to park in. I can see here we've got a completely empty berth, there's no, no boats already parked there. If there was a vessel already parked on the quay 
then the best way for me to approach is to drop my anchor and reverse in on the windward side of that vessel. I put fenders down my leeward side or fenders down both sides just in case. And as I come in, I've got the vessel that's already there. I can rest onto them with my fenders, which makes this maneuver a lot easier. But today we're gonna to challenge ourselves a bit and it's worth practicing as well yourself because there won't always be another boat there to rest on when you come in to a berth like this. So we're about 50 or 60 meters off now. Um, I'm in about five, five and a half meters of water. So I know I've got a chain counter here, so I know when my anchor has hit the bottom initially and then I'll start reversing. So we're in position now. I'm gonna tell Ben to start dropping that anchor and then I'll start moving backwards. So I drop and I'm gonna give him the signal to drop, which is spinning downwards. So Ben will keep dropping until I tell him to stop, which is what I briefed him on and which is what you want to brief your crew on as well. I'm heading directly at that Lagoon 42 at the moment, which is, you know, with the wind blowing me from my port side, I'm actually tracking almost perfectly towards the dock. So it's worth mentioning as I'm coming backwards that I've actually locked the wheel, same as all the maneuvers that we've talked about on this series. Um, delete the wheel from the equation makes maneuvering the boat a lot more straightforward and you've just got one less thing to think about. Okay, stop. Stop. And I've told Ben to stop. I'm about a boat length off the dock and I've let out plenty of chain, so I've, I will extend a bit further back as that chain straightens out onto the, uh, onto the seabed. And I've asked Ben to come back now to the, to the windward corner of the boat. It's very important that he comes to the windward corner because that's the first line I want to get on. Being the windward line, as soon as it's on, I can drive on it and I can hold my position quite nicely on the dock. I'm just letting a bit more anchor chain out now manually because Ben is obviously no longer at the anchor winch. So I'm coming back nicely. I've got 40 meters of chain out now, which is about what I expected to be able to use. And now I'm looking at my camera here. The boat's on about a 45 degree angle to the dock. But as I come in and as I get close, I'll give starboard engine a burst of forwards. And what that'll do, that'll slow me down, which is good, I want to slow down. And it will turn me, so I'm in line with the dock. Now I'm going to take a look at the camera here now, so I can see Ben. Five so I've got five meters on the back, a bit, bit more chain, so to let us come in. Okay, I can see Ben now, he's on the back, and that's perfect. I can see Ben's got that line on. Now I've just stopped, stopped the boat going forwards, or backwards even, and I'm just waiting in neutral until Ben has got that line on. So Ben's told me the port line is secured. And I can now drive on that. I can drive on that with both engines. And what that'll do, that'll just help the boat stay to windward and prevent me being blown further down the dock. Now the boat's secured, as soon as I've got one line on, I've also got the anchor out the front. Uh, it makes the whole situation a lot easier. We're not drifting downwind, down to my uh, starboard side. We're at a fixed point on the dock and I can now instruct Ben to get the, the starboard line on. Perfect, thank you. So Ben's confirmed that we've got both lines on the back. So I'm just gonna to head to the back of the boat to check that all the lines are in the right position. Now I've left the engines in forwards at this stage with these two stern lines tight. You'll notice we are quite far off the dock. I'd say that's, that's, even, that's probably two meters and that's a little bit too far. I'll get Ben onto this windward line and I'll get him ready to release and then I'll reverse the boat. And as the boat comes aft, Ben will take in the slack, tie it off quickly, and then I can drive on it again, and we'll be closer to the dock. So we've done that shuffle at the stern now. Ben's tightened up those lines. We're sitting probably just about a meter off the dock, which is perfect. Now I'm driving on the lines, which is correct. The boat is secure. What I'll do now, I'll lift the anchor up. So I can feel the anchor chain is going quite tight now. Uh, if we look out the front, we can see we've got maybe a, a 50 degree angle on there. I'll keep tightening this and as the chain straightens out along the seabed from the stuff that I've dropped, it will go slack every now and then. I keep going until I hear the chain loading up. Now if we go to the bow and we have a look out the front. We can see we've got a nice 45 degree angle on there. The chain is good and tight and the weight of the chain that's not on the seabed is pulling the boat forwards effectively. So now I'd be confident turning off the engines. I know that the anchor is out just forward of the boat that we can see on a mooring ball off our bow. 
So I know I've got plenty of anchor chain out. I think I've got about 30 or 40 meters out at this stage. You are still relying on the windlass, which is obviously an electric motor. It can take a lot of weight, but in the event that it slips or it doesn't hold fast, it can be useful just to add a safety. Now this is the safety that we use on the anchor when it's stowed to prevent it falling over and creating unwanted deployment. But what we can do, we can extend this as much as we can and then put the shackle through the chain. Now if the anchor windlass does give way, if the wind does come up and it does pull too much, we can be rest assured that that safety snubber line will catch the boat and prevent it moving any further back into the dock. Now the anchor line or the anchor chain is nice and tight. I've got my two stern lines here which are also nice and tight and I've got about a meter off the back of the boat. Now in the Mediterranean you'll very often have a passerelle or in layman's terms a, a gangplank um, to access the boat to, uh, to avoid the need to take any unnecessary risk getting, getting to and from the boat. It's uh, time to, to head off and enjoy the beautiful Greek island that you've just arrived at. So as I mentioned in the introduction, there are two styles for this kind of med mooring. The second option, and one that's also quite common, especially in Croatia, is to use a mooring line. Now, this is effectively the same setup, but you're replacing the anchor and the anchor chain with a line and a concrete block. There's a small line which comes to a cleat on the dock. It runs underwater, becomes a big line, and then goes to a concrete block. Now, the approach would be exactly the same, aside from the fact you're not dropping the anchor, you're just reversing into the dock. Again, if there's a boat already on the dock, put fenders down one of your sides and go onto his windward side and that means he can catch you as you come in. But if that isn't the case, you do exactly what we just did. You come stern first into the dock, you get your windward line on, you can drive on that, control the boat, and then you get your leeward line on as well. Once you've got two lines on, you can then grab the mooring line. Now there'll most likely be someone on the dock to help you. They'll grab the mooring line and they'll hold it up here and you'll be able to grab it with a boat hook from the side of the boat. Now, hand over hand, you walk this forward to the very bow of the boat, pull it tight and make it off on the cleat. Once you've made it off on the cleat, you can go to the other side and repeat the same process. So you've got two mooring lines attached to the bow cleats which go out, again, same distance as our anchor, to a concrete block. Once those are affixed to the front of the boat, you can then put your engines in reverse. And what that'll do, that'll really tighten up the mooring lines on the bow. Simultaneously, you can shorten the stern lines that you've got on the dock, pulling the boat nice and tight, getting it hopefully around the same distance from the dock that we have here. And that's a very common setup that we find in the Med as well. So once you've set the boat up in a nice way. It's important to put fenders down both sides of the boat because you're going to have many other people coming into the dock. It's, the quay will be busy and it will be full by about 1 or 2 p.m. in the afternoon. So fender up the boat nicely, make sure you're nice and protected and then yeah, get ready to welcome your new neighbours for the night. So that pretty much sums up this process. We do hope you enjoyed this video. Now we love getting feedback, we love hearing suggestions, so do let us know and if we can uh, cover any other topics that uh, you guys would like to know about or would like more information in the future, do let us know. If you did enjoy the episode, do hit subscribe if you haven't already and give us a like. Great to have your feedback and we look forward to seeing you soon out on the water. Thank you. Join us in the next episode for more inspirational and educational content so that you can feel confident in your catamaran handling ability. We'll see you then.